like everyone's just like, like oh no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because everyone just is just like. So oh my I was God, like, I was like, okay, I'll overexpress anger so that nobody focuses on Michael. It was yeah, it was dumb. It was like he was so mad for no reason. I guess like, I get it. You ruin things. I like how we're talking about this normal like as a normal person. <laughs> like you've ruined relationship with a dwarven empire. Who cares if you ruin relationship with a dwarven empire? You can easily get it back. You're a. You're g- part dwarves. of God's why crew. Need, why do we need? Oh, actually, why he's not do we part need of God's them? crew. Why, why do we, we need? Them? No, no, no. He was raised by God's crew. Uh, well, still, you're even yeah. God's crew. He you was know fucked God. by God's crew. He was fucking wild. D and D's great. I really need to start learning all the rules and shit so I can be a lot better with my I really want to work on my side quest. I want to make sure that they have more of a story besides two gay monsters having <laughs> sex. I that was off the top of my head. That was so, funny. So true. It so was true. funny. So it, usually it's funny off the top of my head, but I wanna work like I have I have so many ideas like this one with like a pirate with a rift stone and some shit. What's up? So with side quests, you can really it's just about like what would be a funny encounter? What would be a crazy? I know, but encounter? some of them I don't want to. Yeah, I, I, I want to just be like a natural. I want to see. I want to. I, I know it's it's, it's going to sound kind of weird. No, I, I want to use D and D to work on more of my uh, like storytelling. He wants to branch out. He wants to be able yeah. to tell a serious. I want to. I want to okay. use D and D as a okay. way to tell like certain story and, and work on my storytelling kind of. Thing. But you can use no, I Hunter's can. elements. No, yeah, yeah. Th- that's and another thing. I have to. I always. I have to worry about what Hunter's going to allow me to do and what. And what he's not, and what continuity, and what's I not. Feel, well, I feel no, like no, no, if no. like you reel it in like some more, yeah. so and, like you, try to like work, like you know, like more like work on some ideas so that you have an idea. Yeah, I've talked Connor, to him a lot. Ask Hunter how the factions work. And then, no, I know. And then Hunter there. will probably <laughs> let you get away. Oh, with don't a lot. Hunter. Hunter may have talked about some of my more like I have more serious. Yeah. So I'll let you in on one hint. There was this one side quest I had, where. There was a dude, and he had it was a pirate. That you guys that you guys meet, and only some of you would go would go on it. I really wanted Garrett to go on it because I don't think Garrett gets a lot of attention. He does it. In the no. thing. No. So I wanted I want it was more of a side quest for the characters. Like uh, most of my stuff is for the characters that don't that aren't in the main event yeah. right now. So it'd be like Vigor, Katara. Yeah, because like Hunter's like, oh yeah, Vigor gets yeah. all this. Thing. Yeah, but all my stuff. Yeah, exactly. Joke stuff. So like, most of most of my stuff. most of mine was going to involve more people that did because I wanted to give you guys a chance mm-hmm. to do something. So yeah. one of them was you meet this pirate and he has this thing called the Rift Stone. It can hold either two large items or like four small items. And it's if it's like a stone that just holds items and you can carry them around with you and everything. But the story it gets really deep and really like compact and he has like a really big upbringing and character development you guys and he gives you clues about a certain mystery that if you guys figure it out it'd be cool and then at the end it's like a big twist or whatever yeah. that, that's the kind of thing I was working on Hunter thought it was cool but the thing is I have to worry about Hunter has a plan. I guess I, I think I, I know a lot more about the session than you guys uh, yeah, do sometimes yeah. because oh, yeah, Hunter, do, tell, yeah, yeah. Hunter tells me everything yeah, no, you so know I used to he, be that guy. He <laughs> has a plan for a lot of things. I'm not gonna, he does have a plan for everybody to become a main character. He does have he does have stories for each and every one of you. No, but I, he yeah, I agree. He has like, a I plan. So what I have to worry about is, will this affect his thing, or ha- mm-hmm. how long is this going to take yeah. me to actually do? Yeah. But I do want to use... You were right. Now that Hunter added my whole thing, and if you guys roll it, and I get to do my, my shit, hopefully I get to work on more of my storytelling and yeah. more of my stuff. Because it would be really cool to start here, and then build it up, and start doing more and more cooler shit with it. Mm-hmm. I would love to do that. Because I have a lot of good ideas for everybody, I promise yeah. you. It's really good. I'm going to tell you right now, if you want some good ideas... You gotta play a Fallout game. You gotta play Fallout. Fallout. I have played got, Fallout. Which one? Fallout New Vegas. I have played Fallout Four. Don't play oh, Four. Play no, New Vegas. I've played it for thirty minutes. Play New Vegas. Uh, well, maybe play some three though. Uh, no, no, actually, no, 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 man, no, no. Get them both, then get to, uh, the Tale of Two Wastelands mod. Fuck off, oh, man. No, he doesn't, yes. he doesn't have a PC. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I will yeah, be getting true. one soon, hopefully. But Fallout New Vegas is on Game Pass, and so is three. It yeah, is. we have been playing both. I will New play Vegas is generally I, considered I, better. That's why okay, here's it. I promise you. Yeah. See, here's the here's the weird thing. I don't. I can't really get into video games because like, I was telling about the whole memory thing. I yeah. can't really. So I just watch a YouTube video while I play it. Yeah. So I won't really get into the. I know the story about Fallout New Vegas. It's a bunch of gangs and a bunch of shit like that happened. I know the story because I've watched a deep you know dive. All the quests? I've got. I've watched a retrospective deep dive. Do you in know it. all the quests? This Not exactly. Need to know every quest. But I will. I will. I you promise you. Ideas. This is a promise I, I'll make you. 
I will play it. I will play Fallout 3, and I will play Fallout New Vegas. Fallout 3, I might not finish, because That's I don't think... Fine. Fa- That's fine. That's Fallout fine. New Vegas, That's I promise you, I will try to f- I will try to finish, but I'm not promising you I'm going to get too into it, because I don't really like Fallout games. Fallout was never really... I, maybe Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 will be different. Fallout 4, I can yeah, get Yeah, but no, it. Fallout 4 is, is bad. Fallout 4 is actually ass by the Fallout community. Everyone recognizes it. It's just kind of ass. I promise you, you I will. Make any when I go pieces. home tomorrow, Fun fact. if I if I go home tomorrow and don't hang out with people for rest of the night for the rest of the day, day off, I will play Fallout New Vegas. You know the building mod. You know the building in Fallout Four. Oh, it's garbage. It was based don't, off a mod from New Vegas. Don't worry, it's uh, bad. So it's, it's bad. that's how bad. I it did is, so. experience it with a little bit. I, I did get to the point where you got the dog. That was about it. That oh, was wow. where I ended my thing. Yeah, nah. I feel uh, like I, I feel like it'll be really cool. I mean, at least in like the early games, you have to actually like find the dog. Oh yeah, yeah, given to you. I will play Fallout. I promise you, I will. I because I, I have wanted to try. I know you you've talked a lot about it, and then it's different than Fallout Four. So I would I like to play. I love Fallout. And now I, I know it's like isn't like Skyrim with guns. No. That's how, that's how they they, it. Well, 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 they actually tried to. Well, with Fallout 3's gun system, they tried to do the Oblivion like arrow system, but just rapid fire. Yeah. And that didn't work, and they had to scrap it. But that was the original prototype for it. <clears> then they just had to make a whole new thing. So yeah, no, it's just guns. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's kind I of know the cool story of Fallout, Fallout New Vegas. So Fallout New like, Vegas is like good Skyrim with guns mixed with Fallout. Yeah. I like. It. I mean, Fallout I do have to give it to you. What games are I like? I play Sky. Uh, my favorite game of all time is Skyrim because of the replay value. Okay. Oh. I was a very big guy in the FPS shooters. I haven't really been playing games a lot recently, but the games I do play are more like indie games. Mm-hmm. They're like individually made and shit, like Power Wash yeah. Simulator, yeah. shit like that. Um, might I recommend Oblivion? If you like Skyrim. I have tried to play Oblivion, but see, I wasn't one of the people that played it when it first came out, Mm -hmm. and I think that's a very big impact in how you view it, because if you played Skyrim before Oblivion, and you go to play Oblivion, you're not really going to get everything. You're going to be like, why does it look so old school or whatever? Mm -hmm. That's just my... Maybe some people aren't, but that's how I think about it, because it's like, it it is really old. It's... And it's it's very different than Skyrim, and and people who are used to Elder Scrolls Skyrim are gonna be, they're gonna be involved in Skyrim. There's a Skyrim is my favorite game of all time. It's kind of Oblivion's I, weird for me to get into. Church, I church, played church. Obli- like, I'm I did you right play now. Oblivion. Don't, don't look at it. Here. Don't look at it as personally. I don't look at the date because that's kind of nerd shit. First off, <laughs> but second off, I kind of just like get into it, and I'm just like. Yo, this is like a mod for Skyrim, and if you play it with that mentality, but it's not quite that because it's like well, but yeah, but he's what? saying if you play with yeah, that exactly. mentality, like you can get for, into it more. Yeah, like a no, mod I, yeah, I didn't really say it was I get that. But the elements, problem, but the, in, like, there's also just like a lot more elements I get, to like. And I know you can't the shout. There's no dragon yeah, it's a mod. shit. <laughs> it's a mod. These are games that I have wanted to get into. These are games that I have wanted to play. I never, I never, see, I don't get into games. I'm way too busy coming out and hanging out with everybody yeah, to sit there and play games all the time. I, I don't really have the time to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. I play Mountain Blade Warhammer, which is hard. Yeah, no one actually, like, I have, like, an official release lately. Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like Mountain Blade one point out. Oh, yeah, there's Mountain Blade Warhammer 2. Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. That so one came out recently. Never played those, I don't like, I've never played those type of games. What do you mean? The, uh, what are they called? Uh, like their top view things where you go through dungeon crawlers? I never played those. No, no, no. no, they, no, aren't no, no, no. they aren't so much dungeons. Dungeon. Except no, Minecraft no. Dungeons. No, this isn't a dungeon crawl. Yeah, this you is, think of like a Diablo crawl. This is, this is, um, I fight armies. Yeah. Oh. So in Mountain Blade Warhammer, I get to go to like... Is it like, village. is it like, uh, Halo Wars? No. No, because Halo Wars is an RTS. So Halo Wars is like a real time strategy where you like move. Dude, which means that everything's happening. I at the same so time. wish I fucking knew all the terminals. Okay, <laughs> it would okay, make it okay, so okay, much. Okay, okay, no, okay, I know okay. RTS. I know so, RTS. Yeah. So, real time strategy. So, so I know RTS, like, MMO, RPG, FPS. So the difference with like it. Halo Wars and Mountain Blade Warhammer is where an RTS is like the squads are like set up and you like move them. Yeah, and like everything's happening at in the same time. This. Everyone is a direct NPC, and you can command them all individually if you so choose, or have them in groups. And you okay. essentially get like a better oh, like Ghost group. Recon, oh. like that. Except instead of six guys with guns, it's a hundred guys with pitchforks uh-huh. and spears and knives, as well as cavalry. Uh, stick wars, like that, but a lot better and a <laughs> well, well, kind of shittier. But you know, it actually kind of like stick wars. I never, yeah, yeah, I never tried Mountain Blade. I didn't, I like I like Sip Five though. It is like so fucking cool because if you get cavalry, you're just dicking. You're just dicking everyone who doesn't have cavalry. It's so funny. 
Does everybody, you, uh, everybody plays on Xbox, right? Uh, I play. No, no, no PS. Uh, uh, I play, a lot of it's a lot of it's cross play, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I want to start. Yeah. I want to start playing games more, but like I want a reason to do. Like, I love recording. Like I stream so I can record. Like I just stream so I can record the gameplay of me and people playing, so mm-hmm. I can re- edit it and clip it later. I would love to start playing Warhammer or Fallout or some shit while just having commentating. So you you have a you have a mic, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I yeah maybe I, maybe Monday when I'm if I'm playing New Vegas and I want to just talk about it while I stream and I, and I want to talk to somebody, I'll hit you up and maybe we we can we can party up and we'll stream. And you you play on PC though? Yeah. Do you have the Xbox app? Yes. Oh, okay. I have, so, I have, so you can join pre- I have Ultimate for a month. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, so, of course see, I have that. See, I, that's another thing I got to get more comfortable with. I don't like hitting people up because I don't like bothering people. So, sure, I don't like sure, texting people. I'm not being petty on the Xbox app. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, because yeah. it was the only thing you were on. Like, yeah, so maybe, you. maybe if I'm bored one day, maybe if I'm if I'm off and I'm not hanging out with Hunter and never watching <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> maybe finally favorite anime of all time. It's my favorite now too. I'm not gonna lie, it's my favorite. No, I, I just love like. how long Hunter was like, it's my second favorite anime, and it can never go up or down until so we finally was like, you know what? It's been my second favorite anime for like five years. Maybe it's just my favorite. But I can say if if I'm not over here watching that with him. I'll definitely hit some people up. Maybe we'll play New Vegas. Maybe we can comment it over while I stream. Get some funny moments. Bro, what's going that? Some basically. power wash to me? <laughs> yeah, I would love to put power wash to it. Last time you tried, I tried to play with people. It sucked. But dude, okay, now that now, so everyone here has seen Dura. Um, I haven't. I've seen. I've all watched of like it, an uh, episode and was like, eh. you so, didn't like it. I just can't because I'm in the anime anymore. Like in general. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's weird, Carl. I thought you'd be one of the. Uh, um, what happened? I, I just I kind of got tired of it because like so much of it was like the same stuff and, oh yeah obviously you know, like, yeah. I, I just, that, that's, I, like, see, that's the reason kidding. I couldn't get into it that's why I watch all the etchy anime where there's just a bunch of tits and ass because yeah. I just I kind of I don't know why I'm not I don't even like I'm not even sexually attracted to hentai girls yeah. or whatever I just like to watch it because sometimes the plot's really Drunk. good Keijo is the best anime of all time. I'm not lying. Like, Keijo. like I like, like I like, jo- like I like JoJo. Yeah, oh, JoJo's cool. Um, I like yeah, Full Metal Alchemist there. Brotherhood. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I've never seen like any. I've never seen. I haven't fully seen JoJo's yet. I've never seen Full Metal Alchemist. You should watch that one. Anime. Bro, uh, bro, it's a dara ra 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 is probably. The, I don't watch anime. Yeah. So if this coming to me is high praise, it is the best show that I have seen in the past ten years. Yeah. It is everything yeah. connects with with each other, with each other, and it's so wild how it does. And if you are someone that pays attention to shit, and you are someone that can keep a hold of clues, oh my god, it's the best fucking show ever! It literally just shocks me all the time. What? I'm still confused by it. I still get flabbergasted. It was amazing. Carl. Ted, don't spoil anything, please. Okay. I have seen a lot of anime. Okay. You know, I'm a bit of a weeb. Uh, okay. Not lie. You know, and I've seen Hunter. Amused time and time again by some by some very interesting things. Half the time I can't watch anything but Hunter Carl? recommends only because he Carl? feels it feels like a reference to everything. But Carl, 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 okay. I've, Carl, you've seen Death Note, right? Uh, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I haven't seen it either. Like I know it's only like twenty something. I oh, wanted to watch. Well, outside of that, this this is like actually good. What? The Rara? Uh, the Rara. Dude, okay. I'm telling you, Carl, if it's not even just the fact that it's an anime, you'll get into it. It's a show. It's, it's just it's just actually yeah. genuinely good it's writing. It's genuinely yeah. just amazing writing and amazing. It's got plot not like the points, dumb fucking amazing tropes of like development. A anime. It's not like the dumb shonen shit. It's, it's like honestly good okay, anime. Carl. Uh, you probably haven't seen my whole Snapchat rants of where I uh, talk about TV I shows. Don't have Snapchat you've so you've heard me hard. talk about She Hulk, right? And how uh, I rant about it. Yeah. If I had to say, like, because when I talk about She Hulk, I, I give the good and the bad. Yeah. Dorara is actually the a perfect show. It it, it, it hits everything. It uh-huh. hits the development. It hits the 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 foreshadowing. Um, I'm really drunk, so I can't really explain everything right now. But it hits every the, everything you think about a show that you need in a show. It does all of it. It, it, if you're not gonna watch it because it's an anime, watch it because it is a show. It, it's just genuinely amazing. It's genuinely phenomenal. Mm-hmm. How you'll see something in the first episode, and you'll be like, "Well, why did they show me this?" And in like the fourth episode, it'll be very important, and you'll be like, "Oh my god, this is why they showed it." And you'll it, the rewatch factor, which a lot of shows don't have nowadays. 
is amazing. Yeah. You, you, it, when you watch the show, as you're watching it full the way through, you want to go back and re-watch it as you're watching it mm-hmm. because of how much shit you'll realize made sense from previous episodes. Yeah. I promise you, if there's one thing you should check out, and I'm not into anime, I'm not into anything... Watch Dorara Rock. How many episodes is it? Like 20 it's, something? Yeah, 20, 20 something. I promise you, it is probably going to be the most amazing watch of your life. And there's so much. Hunter said there's light novels, there's comic books yeah. of it. But the show itself is so phenomenal. I, I, I'm so happy Hunter showed it to me. It has become my favorite fucking anime. And I'll, it I'll hits make you everything. a deal. And I'll make you a deal that I cannot make the Hunter because Hunter is recommendation to them and made me nothing to me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair, that's fair, but see, I'm recommending it. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's why I'm going to make this joke. I'll watch Dorado Rock if you watch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Full Metal Alchemist what? Brotherhood. That's uh, the, is it the first one? That's the second show, but it's based on the manga. Should I watch the first one before the Brotherhood? It doesn't matter. Um, They're two different universes. The first is one is actually AIDS. So just watch this. Full Metal one. Alchemist Brotherhood is on Netflix, right? Yes. So, okay. so, so I promise you, I watch Full Metal Alchemist. You watch Dorara. Yep. Yeah, right. All right. So I'm I haven't you. finished it yet. So if you finish Dorara before, I will then, finish Dorara. Don't don't spoil it. I've oh, just oh, gotten no, oh, to the part. Not before you. Right? I've gotten to the part before. While the stalker, the stalker has just been identified. That's so, the episode church, of Matt. Church. Okay. Okay. Church. But, so that's a good deal. The difference between Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood mm-hmm. is that after um, oh, something wait. happens, oh yeah, yeah. Um, we the can't say it's like writers, the writers were like, okay, let's go off the manga chapters, but there's nothing written yet. Now what are I we do trying? have to promise you, Carl. I and they cannot, made a whole story out their eyes. The, it, the Full Metal Alchemist has seemed really cool, especially I watched the thing about the the live thing and people talking about the anime and the live yeah, thing. Yeah, don't watch live. And thing. yeah, I, and it I made me. Live, it did actually make me want to watch. Don't it watch made me want to watch the, the anime myself. thing. It it I think it was like far. a. I think it was like a film theory video, but I can't. I can yeah, promise you. you I can promise you. I will watch Full Metal Alchemist, but I cannot promise you. I will remember anything about it. I remember bits and pieces. I can't remember, like, I, I promise you I will not remember anything about it. I will, I promise you, I will watch it. You watch the rah, 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 and it'd be perfect. Like I, said, I promise you, I don't recommend anime that much because I'm not really into anime. Yeah. But the rah, rah, rah is probably the best thing I've ever seen. Believe me, it's, I, it's, the, the be- it's not even just the best anime. Mm-hmm. It's the best show I've seen. Yeah. I don't recommend a lot of anime either, so. Full Metal Alchemist has seemed really cool. I do want to watch it, and I prom- I will I will start to watch it when I go home, mm-hmm. uh, and I get a chance to. Yeah. And that's fair. Like I said, we we will do it, and and that's gonna be great. Uh, is, I've been mean, watching some dumb shit. I'm not gonna lie. I've been watching some dumb. What did you watch? What do you yeah, watch? What do you want? So I watched okay. two horrible ass fucking things in the past two years. There was this one movie. There's this one series about Simone Boulevard, United All of Colombia. It was all in Spanish, and when I got too drunk, I couldn't read the <laughs> subtitles, so I had to be like oh, semi sober to watch it. And I watched Simone Boulevard, United All of Colombia, but it was shot like a Spanish soap opera <laughs> as well as like historical commentary. What the so fuck? it was like, and it was like, the thing has like, oh, <laughs> like Ted, do you like war movies? I, oh yeah, that goes into I my second movies. thing that there I watched is, this year. There is a movie that I really think that you should check out. What? I don't want to. I don't want to look it up right now because I'm doing what? something on my phone. But what? and my phone is dead. But there's a there's a. So if you look up a Windigoon video, I know you don't <laughs> like camera Windigoon. He made this video about the best black and white movie to date. It's like a word uh, word. All silent on the Western Front. All silent on the Western Front. Have you ever seen it? Mm-hmm. The 1931. You have seen the 1931. Yeah. Oh my God! It's the there's, a, there's a whole bunch of versions. The 1931. That's what he's referring to. Yes. Well, actually, it is no, no, no. amazing. Uh, I've seen the modern one. So uh, the, wait, is, like the one that it is out? a the German one. Yes. Okay. It is a phenomenal movie about what actually would happen, happen to, in the Western Front. to the yeah, German uh-huh. people. It happens to Albert Einstein. Yeah. That one's based on World War One. Yeah, no, but no, it is. No, it is World War One. No, it was World War One because the movie came because out in they, 1930 before World War Two. Because they swear to the Kaiser, they swear to the Kaiser in the beginning. It is no, I, I gotta say, father. I gotta talk about this for a second because I, it was very, it was very interesting to me about I what the whole movie. Yeah, like two minutes ago. Uh, very interesting yeah, to me about what exactly happened between between everything and how it all worked out like it oh, 
what was that? that was my job. It was it was just great. It was just good acting all around, and they were they were all good. And from what Windigoon talked about in the clips he showed, I I genuinely felt bad for those people. Like if that actually happened in the Western Front, that's fucked up. It's really messed up. <laughs> Yeah, I know it did, and it was, it was, like, the whole scene of them looking at the truck as they were driving away, and, and, like, then they, that's their last, like, vehicle they'll see for a long time, like, that's their last way home, and then them Uh, going through the whole war, seeing their friends die, that scene where the one dude see is is fighting against the other people and he has to sit there in the trench watching the guy slowly die because he stabbed him, that was... It was insane. And he can't leave yes, because there's so a war going on. I mean, what was the bad war movie you watched? No, this is the one that made me sad. Oh, I thought you said you watched two stupid things. This is the second stupid thing because it made me cry. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, I like war movies. Like, my favorite, uh, actually, like, my favorite movie of all time is Saving Brother, right? How crazy, how, how yes, crazy. I, I actually, I think, I have never seen Saving Brother, Ryan. Bruh. <laughs> I saw it recently. It actually That's a, it's a pretty long movie. It. It's like two hours, okay, forty-five minutes. Right? But I always enjoyed the German perspective in the World War One. See, that's, like, that I, that's why interested. I like. That's what I liked about the Western Front thing. It showed it the Germans. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it showed that, like you know, the Germans themselves didn't actually think what they doing was right. They just did it for their country. They were told that they they, they were going to be. It was right. They the whole point of the movie is that the teacher told these people they were going to be heroes. They were going to be told as legends, and then it they turned out they were the bad guys. Well, actually, Germany didn't do shit. Like it wasn't their fault at all, and then everyone just like is like it was you guys. That's true. That's true. Well, okay, it wasn't well, technically it, 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 all their fault, but it was their fault to an extent. They I had mean, a big had part. The, in it. They had the, the well. It was Austria first of all. That's true. It was not Germany, but they had to join the war. I mean, yeah, they had to join the war. Listen, guys, listen, they, listen. Yeah. Germany insulted France's honor and French. The Franco-Prussian War. Oh Austria is a defendant of the blah blah blah. Bro, why are we talking about everyone the Franco-Prussian War? Everyone wants again. to be Napoleon. Everyone wants to be Bismarck. Blah blah blah. People just Germany wanted to fight France. France wanted to fight Germany. All right. Like they both want. Talking about the Franco-Prussian War. <laughs> they always want to go at each other. They both want Alsace and Lorraine, and they switch it back and forth to each other between both of these wars. Uh, give me a second. I had a good time with French charger. Uh, so, uh, what so kind of charger? It's a Type C. Uh, there's a white one, a five to Like a white wire. Yeah. You guys keep talking about movies. Yeah, no. What? It was a good war movie. It was all in German. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I was, going, I was thinking about watching it. It was about a. Uh, there was also some French shit in there. Like, oh boy. We also watched, like, Band of Brothers, Pacific. Band of Brothers is good. Band of Brothers. Yeah. Okay. about 3 I'll go head home because I'll work tomorrow. Got to be in by 11. Yeah. Yeah. So we're doing that. We're doing skits and bits right now. So we're oh, we're doing it now? Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest, Carl. I've been recording the audio that we've been talking about for the past like 20 minutes. That explains. That's it. pretty hard. That's pretty I think. Idea. I think yeah, recording. Like, the best way to do it. Yeah, I think recording people's, is, is, people's is, is, reactions is, is, without is, is, without them knowing is better. Yeah. Alright, but so what was going on? Oh, uh, um, nothing. The Franco Prussian War. Oh my and, God. Uh, what movies? Uh, Good movies. I never said I've never seen Save the Run. Yeah. I don't know what it's on right now. It's constantly. I, I, last I saw it. Oh, you can but, find it anywhere. Those like weird websites, third party websites. Like Soap Today. I always use Soap Today. Okay. You ever see Band of Brothers? Sure. Uh, yeah, I don't. I never watched Band of Brothers. Yeah, that's I, that's I told that's this that's to Hunter the other day. I should probably mention this to everybody else too. When I was a kid, I never did this type of shit. I never just watched movies. I never watched Wait, Band of Brothers actually. And if I did, it was mostly just Disney Channel. So I was never into like. Tom Hanks, or like, I just recently started doing it because I'm living, I'm, I'm doing yeah, this with myself, it. and yeah. I'm doing it by myself and doing it. I've just recently done this. So all these shit that people are like Saving Private Ryan, Band of Brothers, um, what's that one about the Jewish people? Inglorious yeah, Bastards. Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, Bastards. I've oh, never sh- seen, sh- I've still sh- never sh- seen, sh- I've never seen any of these. I want to watch them, but I would like to That'd watch them with people who have seen them. 
Because I like to get like a fresh perspective. Church. I've seen all of them. Yeah, I've seen most. Of I would. Them. I would also again. His singer is the weird thing that I have to ask. I would also. I love to record reactions of things. So I would love to get like a camera that can sit up and watch and be me and a couple people sit on like the couch. We just watch the movie. I record our reactions and I edit it up. I would like. I would like. I would like. I would like a raw take of Schindler's List. I got. I got. I got the two VHS of Schindler's List, like the two VHS copy, because it's all the one I can buy, and I can only finish the first VHS. A raw take of Schindler's List with two people that have seen it and one person has never seen it would be perfect. I I could not get the message out of the movie. I saw that the first VHS. Really? Is it that fucked up? Yes, it is that fucked up. I would, are you are you down to finish watching it? Once yes, I am. I'm down but to I could not do it by myself. myself. I would love to. Oh yeah, yeah I, I need somebody with me. Yeah, you that movie's fucked up. You guys want watch shit there's Because, because do you know what that movie's about? It's about Jewish people. Like the, the yeah, Jews, the yeah, it's, yeah, it's about the. The Holocaust and extermination of the Jews. So yeah, and like the like, so. living. I would love to see. I would love to watch it. We just need like a like a, a good place to watch it. I need to buy like, it out in the ghetto. I need to buy like a good camera that can set up and watch it. We, we get like a raw <laughs> take of us phone, watching it. Yeah, that'd be fucking yeah, cool. Like, these cool like old like these like World War Two yeah. like war movies. Like, so, I think although I think really the, 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 the movie that captures the Jewish perspective the best is probably the pianist. You, you ever see the pianist? No, car? I have not. Oh my god! Oh but my god! I'll tell you. Watch Boy in the Stripes. Oh no! No, no, no. Oh, yeah, the pianist. One, you know, the pianist is probably. The we don't have to. We don't have to like not watch the pianist. Wait, well, what's the pianist? So the pianist is about this um, uh, Polish Jew who yeah. plays the piano at a at a bar, yeah. and he's really good at playing the piano. You know, everyone likes him. You know, they tip him, they give him money. His family is, you know, kind of well off. But then everything you guys say happens. You know, his whole family gets, you know, eventually, you know, they get marked, they get little stars on them, you know, they get segregated out of the poor districts, take all their things, mm-hmm. then they get moved away. Uh, to Germany. To um, uh, Danzig or Auschwitz, you know, whichever one's closer. But the guy escapes, and the war breaks out, and Russia invades, and he just has to, like, hide, and he runs. He's scared. He's a Jew. <laughs> yeah, we, we know. And he runs. And he just kind of... The whole movie is just him, like, surviving. And just trying to, like, live. And he's, like, in, like, the broken down wreckage and his ruins. And just looking at, like, all of this, like, just broken shit. At one point, he's playing the piano. And this German officer finds him. It's, like, very mock motherfucker. Yeah. And he just keeps playing the piano for him. And, and he knows the song because it's, like, a very popular song. And he has to kill it, and he just fucking kills the guy. The officer, because he knew that. Bro, why would you spoil the movie? That kind of spoiled it. Oh, no, no, no. There's far worse or shit. Yeah, but like, we don't. Like, that's at the end of the no. Yeah, it's fine. I'll like, so probably forget about that anyway. Yeah, yeah. We, we can watch all these movies. I would love to do this shit. Like, but I would love to, like, to get a good reaction to it. Mm-hmm. That'd be so fun. Half the movie then with us, <laughs> <laughs> like little girls. Watch, you watch, you watch like a really sad one, like um, this one, Sarah. Marley and me. No, Sarah showed me one really good. One. Dude, I'll kick someone's ass. They show me Marley and me. Oh, it's that, that it was a little girl and a little dude. A little girl drowned in a war. It was like, oh, Bridge of Terabithia. Oh my God, yeah. You've seen that? Wow, yes. Dude, Sarah. My, my, what? My you friend, don't know Bridge of Terabithia? I don't know. You've never seen Bridge? It's literally the saddest movie I've ever seen. Sarah showed me that purposely to make me cry. Oh, so, yeah, it's literally so, about so, children. It's, like, okay, well, I, mean, I, I, I get the snaps. So, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you, you what happens. You've probably seen more recently. Um, so there's a, there's a little boy and a little girl. <laughs> um, so the little girl uh, suffers from one child syndrome. If you don't know what that is, it's the syndrome that if you see like a medical diagnosis, you also think you have that diagnosis and you give it to yourself. Yeah. Her dad is like a mortician, so he has to like, get their medical diagnosis and he puts them on the paper. She reads the paper and she always assumes she has it. She's always a doctor's office. Yeah. And the kids always worry about her. But it's about this, it's about like young love. But these kids are really young. They're like, they're not even teenagers yet. Yeah. They find this place in the woods called, and she calls it, she's more of the active imagination. Yeah. Uh, wild girl. He's more of the um, uh, confided, like the stay-at-home little dude that never really went out or anything. So they, they, it's a perfect match. Mm-hmm. She's 
she makes him open up a lot more and, and um, experience a lot more of the world. So yep. they, they find this place in the woods where they build a treehouse, and they call it Terabithia. It's their own imaginary world. They make it of themselves because they're children. This is what children do. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to spoil it, but it's kind of in the movie, and they tragically, something tragic happens. Like something very tragic happens. And it, it, it literally... Well, I, can't, I, can't, I don't want to watch. I can't explain it, because if I tell you exactly what happened, it literally spoils the whole point of the movie. Yeah. So, this kid and this girl, for half the movie, they're best friends. They're literally cool. And when me, Sarah purposely showed this to me because she she looked at it as me and her friendship, which made me more upset because she the whole time she's like, "Oh yeah, look, this like me and you." And so, they, they, it's a really good relationship. Fun, it shows it really well. And then halfway through the movie, it flips. It fucking. Yeah, the movie the, 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 and the it one eight. fucks itself up, and it, it's it makes you feel things that you shouldn't feel as a fan. And <laughs> it's just it's just Ew. phenomenal. I what recommend. Do you mean? I reckon I can't explain it because if I explain it, it ruins the whole movie. But if you watch it, I promise you, it is the saddest thing you've ever seen. But it'll make you feel really happy at the end of it, and it'll it showcases tragedy very, very well, especially at a young age. And I'm so happy to share show this movie. It has become one of my favorite movies of all time. The saddest movie I've ever seen. It's very, very good. It's called The Bridge to Terabithia. I highly recommend it to check it out. Yeah, that's good. It's good. Uh, tragedy and comedy. Something tragic, something very tragic happens. And it really changes the whole trick of the movie. It, it's it, you don't you won't see it. Well, you will now because I've told you. Yeah. You it, but if you're it, watching the movie, even if like, it happens, you won't expect that. To happen. Okay, I promise. I'm not going to explain it to you today. I tell you, it ruins the whole thing. But just watch it, knowing that there's a tragedy happening. It might make you feel a little bit better, but I promise you, you'll still be upset. If you pay attention to the characters and how they act, how they view one another, you know, we watch. It, it, it is a very good movie. What is it called? I, it's called Bridge to No, what is the owner? Um, I don't know exactly what it's called, but you probably are going to find the most stuff today. Church. It, it, um, it's we can watch it together, movies. Church, if you want. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like, 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 I, I, I'd be it, kind of scared to watch it by myself. It is one of the scariest movies that I've ever seen. It's not like a scary I don't, I don't want to watch it by myself regardless. It just sounds like, no, on, the way you guys describe it, it scares it's me. It's one of the greatest, saddest movies I've ever oh, been shown oh. in my life. And it, 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 it just, there's so much stuff there that helps you think it, it really makes you think about your life and it really makes you think about the people that you hold, you hold dear to you. I've been thinking about that all my life I, know, I don't but, need but that again this, but this makes it more of a child's perspective like they're they're not teenagers I've been they're a child very, for 20 years I don't even child very, no more it's not bad. it's very good and it, it is it is Probably one of the movies I recommend to most people watch. Church, it sounds like this is just gonna make me cry. It reminds yes, me of yes, it will make you cry. It reminds me of all the bullshit that I know. It will definitely make you cry. You will cry. You will. <laughs> you no, will I don't want to cry. But that's the point. The point of the movie is to make you cry. If you don't cry, you're a fucked up person. If you don't cry at a bridge to Terabithia, there's no hope for you because you're just a fucked up person in general. Facts because if the movie is super sad in the own purpose because it makes it wants to make you feel a certain way. It wants to make you think about something and the thing it makes you think about is really real and really realistic you know what you as you watch the movie you'll feel like you have a friend just like that person it'll you'll really relate it doesn't matter who you are you will relate to this movie and it will hurt you it doesn't matter who you will i'm I'm sorry you say cry you know like some like like media yeah reminds me of one of the only times i've ever seen um, watching something. It's it's so stupid. No, no, well, it's, um, it's it's even by a fucking me to go on, go on. When, go on. when <laughs> Corey uh, breaks, when like Corey breaks up with Topanga like that final time, he gets like so mad at her, and like he's like slamming on the table because like he's like you told me to like go out with her. And like, he's like mad because like she like fucking like, lied to him basically. Well, see, here's the thing. You can make fun of it. You can pull, you can pull your jokes. It's funny, obviously. A man, a man crying is always funny. We can all agree to that. Man crying is funny. Well, Hunter crying. 
<laughs> no, Hunter, Hunter's crying. Eddie Ned crying is hilarious. Hunter's but, crying is you know, over dramatic. Scenario, He's trying to steal the attention sense. back. If you watch Boy Meets Real religiously, no, you not really this. get into it. No, and no. You, you really it's care about If you really so care fun. about the characters, you're going to care about that scene. I've seen that scene really times. No. Because it, it's, it's been clipped in the past. It is very emotional. It is very hard hitting. Yeah, you have to remember, like, this was, like, we watched every single and episode. You have to remember that, that this was back in the day when YouTube wasn't even a thing. There was no big public internet. So when people saw that, all they did was see that. Yeah. So it hit them very well. That that scene to a lot of people was very emotional. The only time... Yeah, but, like, on top of that, we uh, watched every single episode. Wait, yes, up yes. to that scene, and but so, like... Except, it, I watch Red vs. Blue all the time. That scene in Red vs. Blue where Church, who... Named after, which is probably why it's so hard. When he is basically telling them that he's killing himself to make sure that they can run and they can survive, I, I literally, I literally always there's not a single instance I do not tear up at the scene. The quote, the quote that he says is phenomenal. He says, "The hero sacrifices something along the lines of the hero sacrifices himself so that everybody can survive, but the hero never can see that." Hero is dead. Hero just has he to never did, yeah, he just he just has to die thinking that what he did made a difference. He doesn't know if it helped him or not. He doesn't know if that actually made a difference. And if for some reason that hit so fucking hard, whenever I see that, I always tear up. Just like how Hunter would always tear up with that one episode. Because something in that episode really hits him. It really strikes him to the core. Yeah. You know, everyone has some. Teddy probably has some like that. You probably have some like that. Everybody does. And it's just from when you know when something that you watch in a TV show can hit you so hard in the feelings that it literally makes you cry. That's how you know those motherfuckers made a banger ass TV show or banger ass episode mm-hmm. because you really feel it. Yeah. They really catch your energy. Yeah. They really yeah. catch your First time I watched Pokemon Go, I did cry. Not at that scene, but uh, when uh, when Eric gets up on it. Yeah, oh, that's that's a good one too. That's, yeah. See, they said, see, when you, the, a lot of the things that people don't really understand is the reason we tear up or the reason we get upset at these circumstances is we kind of relate to something that happens. Even if you don't think about it, yeah. if you think about it later, you relate to what happened with it. You, you are. You, the reason people get so emotional and so attached to these people on the screen is because we feel just like they feel. Mm-hmm. And that's the point. They want us to feel that way. So we feel just like them. We see ourselves in them. So when we see them go through the struggles that we feel like, that we went through, we feel that. And they want us to feel it. And it's sometimes people do it super well. Feel better afterwards. Yeah, I can even think of a time when I cried at like a scene of a movie that wasn't like the scene wasn't sad. I just cried. Yeah, like, it's sometimes it's like, I don't, nicer, yeah. it just has to be something you related to. It just has to be something that when you see it, it hits you. That, cool that is what it happened. Yeah. Everyone has it. But at that time, knows. I was like, why am I crying? And I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> it just you just relate to it. It's something it's doing this super well. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Are you still recording this? There's this one. I don't mind if it is. I have 35 minutes of video left on my phone. There's only 15 minutes There's a. There's this one thing. There's this one scene that I always remember. I'll upload it, and if you guys want to watch it later, we can watch it later. They always. I'll send you my channel. They always um. I know. It kind of goes back to what you were saying. Kind of like in a different way. Like a hero dying. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, you see the scene from like The Last Samurai. Yeah, for the yeah, Samurai yeah, the I love that movie. I, I you showed me that movie. I had seen it before. That movie is phenomenal. Tom, It's probably Tom Cruise's best movie. It is. Not gonna lie. It's the only one I actually like with him in it. Very much is his best movie. I mean, I, I've never seen you should watch. It's very good. We, we should watch that one together, honestly. Okay. Me, you, and Teddy if, should go with it together. If we watch seven, uh, set, uh, uh, the Akira Toriyama movie, Seven Ronin, Seven Samurai? I don't know. Seven Samurai. Yeah. I'm scared to touch Akira Toriyama properties. He forgets a lot. Oh, sorry. No, it was, sorry. Not, uh, it was, oh my god. It was Akira Kurosawa. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. He wrong, sounds wrong guy, wrong guy. He sounds weird. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, I don't know what that is. Uh, Kurosawa was like in like the 50s. He like made like a bunch of like samurai movies of like samurai. Okay. Okay. Well, well, like, the last samurai media. is Tom Cruise's probably best movie. Yeah. It's very phenomenal, and it's based on a true story. Okay. And Tom Cruise plays this character so well that you really feel like he was the person in the story. Mm-hmm. And he did learn Japanese. We will, maybe that should be world. the first time we watch it, because I know me and you have seen it. I've seen it multiple times, multiple times. Carl's never seen it. I would love to see your reaction. It's, it's one of my... Can... Well, you have your basement all yourself. Yes, it is. You set up like a big living room where we watch it. Yeah. That'd be cool. Maybe after D and D. I don't think you're. And if you are, if you need to ride home, I don't mind taking you home. Yeah, I, I, I would. I have a, I have a new like. car, so I don't mind driving a shit ton. Yeah, like night. if I was staying out that late, I'd probably. Maybe one and after D and D, be you, Carl, be him, be, be if, if your parents are okay with me. Oh yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. We watch the last samurai. We, we record some shit. We shoot the shit. And we have a good time. Yeah. It sounds like a plan. Oh, but uh. Good. Continue what you're saying. I'm sorry. So you were talking about the whole hero thing. It was one of my favorite scenes. Now, since we're going to watch it with Carl, I don't think I really want to say that. Well, it's true. It's true. So now I'm kind of fucked. I, say, it, I know what you're talking about. It's a great scene. And that one is just like... It, 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 shows, it shows that he... Well, well it's, just, it's kind of like this like ideology of like... I am fine with it myself. I think here, here's how we can you don't explain have to it. Here's it. how we can explain it without spoilers. So, the character goes through such a big development, and you do see it happen gradually. But you really, you really see it hit at this particular scene. If I'm right, and you're talking about the scene where he goes up and he just, you know, whatever else is. Yeah. Yeah. So at this scene, you really see it take an effect. And you really, you really do start to feel it. He has finally done the thing that he's been trying to do. That people have been trying to tell the whole movie. He finally, for himself, stands up and he chooses to the same basically. And, and that's not a spoiler, right? I don't think that's a spoiler. Like, he, cho- he makes a decision, basically. Like, he, he, he chooses freedom. It's, it's, it, it's, it's something so odd. Yeah, you see I've it gradually seen... happen, but at this scene, you see it just happen like, right in your face and it, it hits very well. I've seen a lot of revolution throughout the world, mm-hmm. whether it be Latin American or Bolshevik, mm-hmm. but like never seen. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like in film or movies oh, okay, or in okay. adaptations. Thank you. And it always yes. is with this. It is always with this a certain ideology. But in this film, it's with this separate like ideology that still captures a spirit that is just so unique, but it's so familiar. You know. And it's just like, God damn, that's kind of... You know what I kind of got into for, for a while? Some real shit. Uh, porn movies. Porn movies. Those were pretty Specifically, good. I got really into Korean movies. Kim's convenience. <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not that one. Not that one. Kim's convenience. There is actually a film on this. It is. I know. Like, if it's like, if it's like, it's like, it's the plot seems like decent and it's not like, like the main focus isn't romance, I'll like give it like a five. But, um, like, I just don't care enough to, like, watch a movie where, like, the main focus is romance, because, yeah, I mean, see, romance is something that I get into a lot, because a lot of the time they do it very badly. Yeah. Like, there's only, like, I would, like, say, even watching She-Hulk, I've noticed, there's only two ways that media describes men, and there's nothing, like, I'm not trying to be Andrew Tate about this, you know, yeah. but there's two ways, either... The man you're chatting is, out or you're sitting out. Either the man is the most perfect person you'll ever see and he's what every girl dreams of, or every single dude in the show is a piece of shit who's just misogynistic and wants to fuck the girl. The girl. That's not exactly how it is. Some men are cool and some men are chill, and some do it pretty well. Like She Hulk, even Hunter said, after the first like three episodes, four episodes, she does beat a dude and you go on a date and he is really respectful and then you show it a little bit but he's more on the side of the perfect man kind of thing mm-hmm. rather than an in the middle because there's really, there's only two ways to train men and men so yeah. that that whole thing goes to whatever you're saying yeah. you know so romance romance is not usually good to movies because they don't really show that 
Bromance, it, 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 it can kind of be funny. It, it's kind of it funny. Is, it's see, when they funny. do it funny, it's fun. But well, no, well, 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 you it's can't funny, show like, romance because everyone looks at it differently. Everyone's, everyone's perspective, the description of romance is different than every other person. So you'll never actually get it perfect, and it will never actually feel right or real because you know these people don't actually love each other. Well, that's, Unless they're actually dating well, there well, are no, no, no. well, no, no, see, that's the actual beauty of it, because, see, a lot of directors don't know how to make a love scene at fucking all, and it's really awkward, really clunky, and it really doesn't make sense, or it's just yeah. spur of the moment, it's like that movie, but the thing uh, is, is that love can be like that. Is it that movie you were showing me before, Dolomite? Oh. How they did that, but they did the sex scene, but they made it funny, because they knew they couldn't do it serious. That's the best way to do it. Funny? I don't... I don't think you can portray love in a correct way because love is always perspective. Well, I, yeah, so it's really up to the director, and that's where you really get to see like his humanity and, and where his values lie. And if you agree with his perspective, then you'll like yeah. the movie. But if you don't yeah. agree, then you will. Here's like the, well, no, no. Then you also have to like go along with like what the movie's about. Though, like you know, you have to understand. Here's the thing about comedy. So I don't think comedies are all funny. They're just not. Like so many of them are. They try to be funny. They try to be funny. Yeah, they try to be funny, which which makes them not funny. Yeah. Like, you can tell that they're trying way too hard. I honestly kind of agree. I haven't enjoyed a good comedy. Like, like I'll watch like, like, <laughs> Jim Carrey or something, like, like, like a lot of and stuff. But, like, yeah, they have, like, actors like, hmm? What's up? So far, I'll be. Oh. Then you have actors like Adam Sandler, who's, like, absolute fucking god. <laughs> like, dog tier. <laughs> Like, well, hey man, The World's End was technically a comedy. Yeah, like, I get it, but like, no, come on now. Based on what you thought you were gonna trip me up? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, do that sometimes. Uh, what's the movie I did? Yeah, I figured that's what you're doing. And, uh, how many movies? It's taking a mess. Depends. <laughs> because sometimes it really depends, like, what area your humor is in, you know, what, what your taste is. Yeah, but it's just like, like, the modern comedy? Yeah, fuck no, that's all shit. I saw a thing that said Tom Hanks actually spit that like a minute and fifty two seconds in that bathroom and that's like the verb record. And I was like, yo, I would pee after that. I was in there for two minutes pissing myself. Like, yo, what the fuck? That's bullshit. Well no, because I think at the time Tom Hanks actually did have uh, No he did. Yeah. He did, so it was real. But that doesn't matter. It was still bullshit. I pissed for two minutes, so it doesn't matter. So <laughs> now back to my movie idea. So okay. we have a new idea. Me and Dietrich were one day, we were sitting around. Yeah. And I didn't really get some camera for that. I did not record this. So, we were sitting around. I thought of this movie video called Old G. Okay. What is now, it? It's a play on words of OG, mm-hmm. original gangster. Oh, it's yeah. called Olive Old. Garden. <laughs> oh, my God. It's called OG Old. Specialist. I think I told you this before, Ted. My dream in life is to become a man. Who just kind of is like an old man who sits outside of his couch and there's everyone in the neighborhood. He's just some old dude that just tells stories. That's the basics of this movie. Yeah, like you so old, 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 old G is a man. Okay. He, he just has a house in a neighborhood, like a small neighborhood where everybody knows each other. Yeah. And he goes outside all day because he's retired, he's old, whatever. He just sits in a rocking chair, walking back and forth, smoking some fucking weed. Maybe drinking, waiting for people to come to his house and tell these kids stories. Now the whole point of the movie is he's he's a gangster. He, he lived that life. He was a part of it. So throughout the movie, you'll see him dealing with younger children who are in part of that life. Like one of the scenes was one of the kids accidentally gets involved in some bullshit. And he gets shot. So he instead of going to the cops, he goes to Old G. And Old G, the old gangster, he patches him up. He's like, he's like, I've done this before, I've seen a million people get shot, like, I know how to do it, you know, the cops, and he tells the kid, he's like, look, I know you like this gangster lifestyle, I know it's good for you, I 
know you feel like it's you got your adrenaline run. I know you feel like you're living in your top life, but look, it's unsafe. You gotta, you gotta stop this. And old G that convinces me to down. Calm me down, tries to get me to get out of the game, tries to get me to calm down, to slow down, to stop robbing all these corner stores, stop Fast going, life and stop stuff, shooting bro. up, to, you know, stop going to the gang, like, like, uh, shit like that, gang stop, banger, man. stop doing shit like that. And yeah, how do you li- burn the fast and, and the kid listens to him, because he's an old man, he knows what he's talking about, and then, and then you have other scenes where kids come up to him, and, he, and maybe old G's, you know, he's he's a gangster, so he throws parties, he lets the kids party, so he's throwing a party, and then a couple of the kids start getting into an altercation, and old G has to come up and be like, look, shut the fuck up, you fucking piece of shit, you both are wrong, this is why, and, and he calms down. Basically, the whole concept of the movie was there's one old person who's an, who's an original gangster, and he's sitting there, and he's talking to all these kids, and he's He's making sure they're on the right track and he protects them and they all come to him because they feel like he's a safe person to talk to and he just helps them out with everything. Yeah. And here's the best part of the movie. It all takes place with one continuous camera angle. It'll cut in and out between the angles, but like the movie starts out with you know changes by Tupac. Yeah. It starts off with that song. It's playing loud, and then as it slowly zooms in on Old G's house, you see it slowly zoom in on the radio, and it's playing on the radio. Mm-hmm. And then Old G's sitting on his rocking chair, he's rocking back and forth, going out, and then some kid comes up to him, like, hey, what's up? Like, I called him Church in the script, because I thought it was easier, so he was like, what's up, Church? Like, how you doing? Like, what's been up, man? What's up? How, what's good? And Church is like, hey, what's up, little homie? How you been? You know, you been gangbanging and shit, whatever. Because he's comfortable with them doing it, but he's not comfortable when they get themselves in trouble. He wants to be safe as they do these gangsters. So he just wants to put them in the right track. Yeah. And that's the whole movie. The whole movie is just, it's, it's not, there's no big plot, there's no big twist. It's just this old man sitting in a rocking chair daily on one continuous camera angle, helping these kids out, making sure they're good, making sure they're safe, and making sure that they're going to be up there. Basically, my movie idea, where it was, it was called Old G. Yeah, that's pretty good. Basically, I want to have to I mean, you know what? This we need to come resolution up with like a, a real movie. Yeah. Oh, like, I have so. No, I mean like together as a collaborative force. Like awesome. not, like not, like not like the quick like. Like ideas that were coming up for like the, uh, the reality show, but like I mean like a, like an idea for like a real yeah. yeah, I I do that. Like I said, I really love recording shit. I, I absolutely love. I hated being the guy that made the thing. Like I guess it was like you, you've seen David Dobrik and like Alex Warren and shit. The vloggers. I always I was kind of like them. I love recording my friends doing that. Like, yeah. And seeing them do shit that I might have set up. I hated actually being a part of it. I love being behind the camera and catching everybody. So do I. That's what I like. It's still I would love to see people this year. Maybe, maybe start making old G. Because the whole, the whole point of it was, honestly, I based old G off my uncle. Because he is a gang. My uncle is a gang. He, he is an white. old G. He might be white or whatever, but he is a he grew up in Baltimore, he grew up on the streets, I'm up here crazy. But a lot of the shit that old G goes through is because of shit that he's told me. So he was the perspective of the person that I was thinking of. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe we could get, I get him to play the guy, and then me, and then I get my friends come over, and then we, they start shooting shit. I'm not even, I just want it to be one continuous camera angle, because I don't want it to come in and out between old G's. I want it to be... Camera angle that zooms in on his house and it's constantly following this dude. It's kind of like a mockumentary. It's like you're documenting him, but he doesn't know you're documenting him. <laughs> no, I got it. I like that, dude. Is it? And you just follow him around and you see his adventure. Yeah, like I said, it's the same thing as I did, but you, you, there's a lot more that goes into this making a movie than just making a movie. You gotta get, you gotta get, you gotta get a script together. You gotta work on I don't like doing like shit. Man. I don't. I don't like making people do. I, I think that the best thing is letting people go free. And 
they do do what they do best and be in their character. That's why I told that you guys. That's what That's why so. when I when I said I want you guys in a certain space, but I still want you to act the way you did. You guys did phenomenal. Too. Ted was perfect because he just did what he did. What the director does. And you were just you were amazing, Carl. Because you just seemed like a natural. Playing your character, it's probably one of the It's like D&D &D in real life. It's just playing improv. It's improv. Like, yeah, that's why I did well. And I liked it. I really do appreciate everybody doing that. I said, I, I don't really go out and spread my ideas much like that. But if I did, everybody accepted me. It was really good. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, more like-minded individuals. We like the idea. And now that I know this, I can start putting up more and more ideas like that. I have so many short work on my ideas. The idea this force to do. I mean, people do like this. One, like, one of someone sitting walk up and they start walking into the forest and they come back with like a gunshot wound in their chest but they walk like everything's normal and you see blood dripping and then it just cuts them into the black static and they sit in the launcher as blood's dripping from them and then it cuts again to static and when they get up they look at the camera they point to it it cuts again and they're in the launcher and they're like dead lying down and then it cuts again and they're alive it makes no sense at all, but I'm, I'm, I'm it's playing. Funny. It's funny. I want to. No, it's not funny. I want to do. You ever seen like the ARG shit? Yeah. Like a Mandela catalog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do something that's so bad. And the what, surreal shit. Yes, I want to do. You want, want like this like cryptic story? Yeah. Everybody, want the, yes, Everybody yes, want the surreal yes, shit. Everybody want the surreal shit. I'm just yeah. so fucking bad at it. <laughs> Like that's maybe, why I need. Maybe, that's why I need everyone else's help. I need you guys to give me the stories. Maybe you could take like some of your film ideas that involve these woods and like work that into a that's, into yeah. a story. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe church, something church, about church. something that's like, in the woods. Church. These yeah. woods. So, kind of go with the idea of you know, speaking rules mm -hmm. and like lots of storytelling and with speaking. Because I took a speech class. The trick is is to have the people like so engulfed and like kept at their attention that when there's a silence, they're quiet. But, like, and you can hear. I feel like I, I feel like what comes I feel like a lot of his ideas involve like no dialogue. It, yeah, that's good. See, that's honestly, good. Honestly they do, but that's the I is. want to add dialogue, but all the dialogue I ever think of is no. And I, I thought it'd be a cool idea to add comedy to but, really horrifying situations. I think. I agree, but I also agree. Like, I, I believe in that the classic age old and I think it's like the best movie. You know, like, I think like the best movie piece of like any movie maker or like anything you possibly think is show no tell. So, that's what really so, yeah. well, the fact you, that you guys know Michael's bathroom downstairs. Yeah. yeah. I was in the at one D and D session. I think I don't know if you guys realize, but for one one time, I, I, I said I was going to the bathroom. I disappeared for like thirty minutes. I think it was like two sessions ago. How much is left? I think a minute. Oh shit! Uh,